Hi folks. So in this episode, I'll be taking you through the monetary policy. In our last two topics, we had completed the circular flow, the GDP, the business cycle and the fiscal policy. The next is the monetary policy and this policy is again in relation to the business cycles because uh, if the economy is having those hiccups or the roller coaster ride, as we had explained earlier, uh, it could be another uh, policy tool to correct that business cycle. Let's get back to our initial uh, circular flow that we have learned through in our earlier two topics. Uh, the, you can see the three withdrawals from the economy were the savings, taxes and the imports and the three injections into the economy are the investments, government spending and the exports. And thinking of this balloon again, back to the same old idea, how's the economic circular flow? That's what we need to ascertain before we even talk about any policy measure. And visualizing it again into the old form of a balloon. Yes, we may want to recollect, is this balloon contracting or expanding? And goes without saying, if this balloon, that is the economy is shrinking in terms of having going through a recession, um, we will need to take a different measure in terms of having more injections and lesser leakages. Or onto the other side, if it's expanding, you can say that we need to reduce the injections and increase the withdrawals. Now, as, as I had uh, shown it in the very first slide relating to the monetary policy, it is all about money. Money. And the moment you see the word monetary policy, two things you've got to remind yourselves. Number one, it's about money. Number two, it is executed by the central bank of a country. So the focus now is entirely on money. And by changing this money, we would want to change the consumption and investment in the economy. Uh, again, back to the idea of aggregate demand, recollect that the aggregate demand is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus N. Easy way of remembering again this whole thing in relation to the economy. Remember the fiscal policies to do with the government spending. As you can see, G, any changes in the government spending or the tax taxation will affect the aggregate demand and thus the economy. Now our focus is we want to affect this investment and thus affect the aggregate demand. So back to the same idea repeatedly, I have said that fiscal policy was all to do with the government spending and the taxation, whereas now the monetary policy is primarily focusing on this financial sector. So circular flow kind of helps you to remember so many concepts as we have already done it before, the business cycles to the GDP, to the fiscal policy, and now it's the monetary policy. And in fact, even international trade, everything revolves around this. So interestingly, circular flow is, yes, definitely a very, very important concept. If you want to understand economics concepts, especially the macroeconomics at, a, at the root level. So uh, asking yourselves a very, very basic question when you start off, this is the way of having that storytelling that, okay, this is all about money. Where does this money come from? Well, from the banks. Who takes it? The firms. Do the firms get it for free? No, they, they, these banks would definitely charge a particular fee. And what's that fee called? for parting with that liquidity that the banks have, that's called interest rate, yes. So the banks would charge interest rate and thus the investment is directly affected by the interest rates. And not only the investments, of course, the savings too. So if the interest rate is high, what is interest rate in principle? What did we say? It's the price for borrowing money from the banks or financial institutions. So obviously if the interest rate is high, what happens to your cost of borrowing? It goes up, investment would go down. On the other side, if the interest rate is high, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep money in the banks? Yes, that means savings would increase. So it, it is going to affect both the things simultaneously. High interest rate would mean more savings, less investments. And low interest rate would mean less savings, more investments. That's typically how it will work, right? Similarly, even for consumption, if you were to think of, uh, if, if the interest rate is low, yes, consumers can easily borrow more money. And even if they have got already some loans from the banks, it is lesser debt repayment. So they are left with more money to be able to spend, right? So it is 
that, that interest rate, you can really see this, uh, these three things that we are literally focusing on as of now. But then should be the next question in your mind. What decides this interest rate? How is this interest rate determined? Pretty much back to demand and supply. It depends on the demand and supply of what? The goods and services? No, it depends on the demand and supply of money in the money market, right? Now, economics, as we have said that again and again, it's all about demand and supply. However, the supply of money is considered to be a stock flow concept. So in other words, it doesn't change with the interest rate changes. Like, uh, and that's why we just put it up that money supply is perfectly inelastic in the economy at a given point in time. Right, so any changes in the demand for money or a complete shift in the supply of money is going to affect the interest rate. Now the point comes back again, how does this money supply get affected? So did you see how we went off? We started off, okay, it is the interest rate that affects the investments. Then our question was, uh, how is this interest rate affected or determined? Then we say the demand and the supply. And then now we want to know, how does this interest rate or this interest rate can be changed yeah and that is by the changes in the demand and supply our next question should be how is the supply affected and that is where the supply of this uh, of money is actually affected by the open market operations what is this open market operation again visualize the stock market how do the firms arrange money through the bonds and the shares in the share market, right? A typical example you may want to think of that the reserve bank or that is the central bank of any country actually buys or sells the treasury bills and the treasury bonds. That is the government securities. In context of Australia, if you were to think of, it's a commonwealth government security. So by buying or selling the commonwealth government securities, what does the bank do, the reserve bank or the central bank? it changes the supply of money in the overnight money market. And what's this overnight money market? Basically wherein all the banks settle their transactions at the end of the day, and each bank or every bank actually has an exchange settlement account with the reserve bank. And thus, any changes in the availability of the money in this open, um, rather overnight money market would directly have an impact on the cash rate. So think it through on a very, very logical manner. If it's the reserve bank that has got the exchange settlement account of the banks. And in that exchange settlement account or in the overnight money market, if this reserve bank charges a high interest rate, what happens? The cost of borrowing for the banks becomes higher. Yes. So we started off with a simple point that to begin with the money supply is changed through the open market operations. That is by buying or selling, by buying or selling of the Commonwealth government securities. When the money supply is affected, the change in the money supply in the overnight money market affects the cash rate. And the cash rate, which is actually the cost of borrowing for the banks, if that changes, the banks tend to transfer it to the customers through the changes in the interest rate. If the interest rate changes, the consumption, investment, and exports can change. So you may want to consider again, why did the interest rate change? It changed because the cash rate is high, because if the banks have to pay a higher money to the other banks or to the reserve bank as a part of their borrowing, obviously they would try and transfer it to their consumers. Uh, consumers as in customers who borrow the money, these customers could be the, you know, the, the households or the firms, that's a different story. Now, these this would mean if any change in interest rate occurs, this will affect your consumption. Consumption as in, we have already talked of that, for example, if the consumption is high, uh, sorry, if the interest rate is high, you may want to uh, borrow less money and obviously you, your consumption would go down. Alternatively, you can think of it that, you know, you've borrowed money for your house or anything else, your debt repayment is becoming more and thus you're left with lesser disposable income. So again, your consumption is likely to go down if the interest rate is high. Just on the same lines, the, the investors, the firms would also tend to borrow less money because the interest rate is high and it's a cost of borrowing. Exports, 
uh, if the country is following a flexible exchange rate, the interest rate and the exchange rate tend to go hand in hand. So if the interest rate is high, exchange rate would go up. And if the exchange rate goes up, exports would fall down. So typically, this is how it will happen. And we know it. These three are the components of aggregate demand. So if consumption increases, investment uh, increases, and exports increase, aggregate demand will increase. Just on the other side, if consumption decreases, investment decreases, or exports decrease, aggregate demand will decrease. And applying these principles on the uh, aggregate demand supply model, you would see that any change in this would be reflected through the changes in the GDP, CPI, and employment. This is typically an example here. If the economy is following a contractionary monetary policy, when does the contractionary monetary policy get uh, implemented? Yes, when the economy is expanding. If the balloon is expanding, in other words, if there's a boom situation and the price level is going up, the, uh, the bank would actually follow a contractionary monetary policy, which means in context of Australia, the Reserve Bank of Australia would decide to um, you know, increase the interest rates. And how does it increase the interest rate? Come again? Yes, by decreasing the money supply. How does it decrease the money supply? By selling the Commonwealth government securities, or as we call it, the, the government bonds. By selling them, when that is sold, there is less supply of money in the market, and thus the interest rate starts going up. As the interest rate goes up, what happens? Yes, you're right. Investment decreases, consumption decreases. And if these decrease, what happens to the aggregate demand? Aggregate demand decreases. And if aggregate demand decreases, yes, price level goes down, GDP goes down, unemployment can go up. Okay. But the whole objective is that the economy is overheating, and that's why we want to shrink it down and on the other side if the economy is going down it's just the opposite remember when we said um, often students get confused with the idea of uh, change in the money supply of buying and selling how do i remember this just a very very basic thing when you're talking about the open market operations we are talking about the buying and selling so what is the objective of the Reserve Bank or the Central Bank in this situation? It wants to take away money, let's say. So if it wants to take away money, what should it do? It should sell. I mean, how can I take away money from you? Only when I'm selling you something, I can take away money from you. Think it on those lines. So uh, on those lines, you can think it that the Reserve Bank would just sell. When it sells the Commonwealth Government Securities, it will get back and you get away the money from these banks. So there'll be lesser money into the money market and thus cash rate can go up. What is cash rate? Um, the cash rate is the interest rate charged by the reserve bank or the banks in the overnight money market with each other. So it's like an intra-bank or reserve bank interest rate. That's the simplest way of remembering this idea. So this is pretty much about the monetary policy. And if you get a question on these, do not fail to uh, you know, draw a diagram. It's good to draw these causation chains. And alongside, maybe you may want to consider to draw an aggregate demand supply diagram to show how the aggregate demand is changing. So if it's expansionary monetary policy, aggregate demand would be to the right. And if it is uh, contractionary, it'll be to the left. And I would say that's, that's it for the session today. And uh, hope you continue to prepare well for the exams and uh, feel free to pop up a message.